Hello, my name is Alex Isles and welcome to the top of Yeavering Bell in Northumberland. Now Yeavering Bell is a hill and on top of it there is an Iron Age hill fort. But the landscape around here really shows you the reason why this is here. If you look below me you can see the Millfield Valley and then we'll go to the other side where you can see the Cheviots on the other side. This is a rich valley created by the last ice age so glaciers would have come through here and as they melted away they dropped the rich fertile land and the landscape you see below me. Just down here in front of us is where the Anglo-Saxon capital of Adgeffen would be built later which I'm going to do a video series on and you can see the river Glen just flowing through the bottom of the valley. So for the early peoples who came into here so you've got first of all the Mesolithic people we have found flints around this area so we know they were coming through here then into the Neolithic farmers where they would have found a densely wooded location you can still see small amounts of woodland here some of it's modern but on the other side on the south side of Yeavering Bell there's still some ancient oak woodlands which is pretty much all that's left of the dense oak woodlands that used to be in this area covering this hillside so the Neolithic farmers would have entered this landscape found that and then when they found that they started farming on these hillsides as well. As you come through into the Bronze Age, the Bronze Age people would have come in here, started deforesting and taking over the landscape far more wholesale than the earlier ne Neolithic farmers. They started to build their henges, the stone circles and their monuments and so they set up the landscape and here the Millfield Valley just below us has got 10 henges at least. So you've got an amazing location around here which was of, of, which was of incredible ritual significance. Following on from that, just here, Yeavering Bell seems also to have had a huge amount of ritual significance as well because of the fact there was a cairn on top of here too. The whole landscape is covered in the stones left over by the last ice age and also from the sand deposits just at the bottom down there which created what Brian Hope Taylor, an archaeologist who excavated this site, called the Whaleback which is a large amount of sand and gravel deposits right there where the Anglo-Saxons eventually built their palace. Coming over to the other side you'll be able to see the Cheviot Hills and they are just on the other side over here. And by the power of editing I'll jump you through till you can see them on the other side. five, four, three, two. So here on the other side you can see the Cheviot Hills in the distance and those hills over there on a clear day you would see Hartthorpe Hill on the other side. Now the south gate of this fort was lined up with and on a clear day you can see the Cheviot and Hartthorpe Hill on the other side. So this landscape right here gives you an idea to the south gate of the fort, this is the south side of it, you can see up to the amazing hills all around here and take you off into... So from the south side here you can see off into the hills of Northumberland 
and the surrounding landscape around here as well and how impressive it actually is. Now imagine this is dense woodland where the people, the Bronze Age and the Chaleolithic or the Copper Age people are moving into this landscape and they're finding this dense woodland here that they're moving into and taking hold of it and then from there they would have started farming and later on become the Iron Age people or who some people call the Celts and as they come into that landscape they would have taken it over and transformed it to become the land that we recognise though sadly in the very modern sort of period in the last 200 odd years many landowners torched much of the woodland so they could set up this more uh, this land in front of you that you can see through uh, so they so they could set up the land that you can see to the front of you here for pheasant and grouse shooting and so unfortunately we lost a great deal of the woodlands that used to exist in and around this valley in this location and there are some of the offenders flying off into the distance, the grouse. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode, even if it's a shorter one, and it's introduced some of the landscape around here so you can understand what it would have been like just as the people came and took over the landscape. Thank you very much.